Hi, I'm Vivek M. Chawla, a developer experience product manager at Salesforce. I want to tell you about some new tools we just released to help pro code developers build faster and better with Agent Force. I'll be sharing some future plans as well, so remember to make purchase or investment decisions only on generally available features. Agent based solutions are a must have for Salesforce customers. For pro code developers building on Agent Force, this meant leaving behind familiar tools and workflows to navigate new org based builders. Now, to help, we've extended the Salesforce developer experience to agents. Our goal is to minimize context switching and enable professional DevOps while still making it easy for low code and pro code developers to collaborate. The result is Agent Force DX Pro Code, a collection of tools for Salesforce CLI, VS Code, and Code Builder. With these tools, you can create new agents using natural language, test existing agents from your IDE or as part of a CI CD pipeline, and even talk to an agent while updating its code in your IDE. Now, I'm going to demonstrate all of this in just a moment, but before I do, I want to tell you how to get these tools for yourself. Now, the process is the same for local VS Code and Code Builder. First, you got to make sure you have the latest version of the CLI installed. Next, install the Agent Force DX CLI plugin. Finally, install the Agent Force DX extension for VS Code or Code Builder. That's it. Now, one more tip. If you need an environment to get hands on with Agent Force, the new Developer Edition orgs are amazing. They've got Data Cloud, Agent Force, and everything else you need to build real, agentic enterprise apps. In fact, the demo that I'm about to show you was built with the exact same type of DE org that you can get for yourself. All right, enough slides. It's time to show you what Agent Force DX Pro Code can do, starting with agent creation using the CLI. I'm here at the terminal in VS Code where I'll start the process of creating an agent by generating an agent spec. The CLI asks me a few questions about the agent I want to create, then uses generative AI to flesh out the topics the agent would need. I open the spec that was generated to review those topics and their descriptions. Everything looks good, so I use the CLI to create an agent from the spec. I give the agent a label and an API name, and then I wait for the command to complete. When it does, I see that the agent's metadata was added to my project. Now, the agent also exists in the org right now, which means I can use the CLI to open the agent directly in Agent Builder. This saves a ton of clicks I would have made in setup if I'd been doing all of this without pro code tools. And end to end, this is one of the fastest ways to build your first agent. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't always keep what I create, especially when I'm learning. But the thing with agents is that they got a lot of metadata. That's why the CLI has a new metadata pseudo type called agent. You can use the agent pseudo type with deploys, retrieves, and deletes, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, the CLI is going to let me decide how much related metadata I want to delete, and then it's going to let me confirm my choice. And now, when it's done, my project and my org are both clean and tidy. Now, what if I want to build an agent for real? Well, the great thing about agent specs is how flexible they are. Here, I've got a partial spec with a much better company description and role than I used for my first agent. I've also set the max number of topics to two to keep this agent more focused. Now I'm going to use the generate agent spec command again, only this time I'll specify my partial spec instead of being interviewed. Now, when I open up this generated spec, I can see that there are two topics that are exactly what I wanted. Now I can be extra sure about what's getting created by running agent create with the preview flag set. Like before, I set a label and API name, but this time instead of creating an agent, I get a JSON blueprint of what will be created when I remove that preview flag. Now again, I like what I see, so I want to move forward with creating this agent. This time, I'm going to skip the interview by providing all required information via command flags. Now, even though many agent commands have helpful interactive interviews, every one of them can be directly scripted in headless environments. And there you have it. My local info agent is ready to be customized. This next demo gets us hands on with agent testing from both the IDE and CLI. From the testing panel in my IDE, I can run the agent tests in my local project, just like with my Apex and LWC tests. Now it looks like I've got a few failures, so I open up test case number one to get more details. 
I see the topic, action, and outcome evaluations all passed. It's just that completeness metric that's causing a problem. Thing is, that's a false negative. The agent didn't provide local event info because the utterance didn't indicate any specific interests. I'm going to fix this test case by opening the YAML test spec and removing the metric with the false negative. I double check the metric in the test output, which is super convenient because the info I need and the file I got to change are right here side by side. Now to get this change to my org, I use the agent test create command. It takes my YAML test spec, converts the contents into an AI evaluation definition metadata file and deploys it to my org. Now I'm going to run this test again, only this time from the CLI. Tests are run async by default, so I use the wait flag to make this a sync request. These results are human readable, but if I was running this in a CI CD environment, I could add the JSON flag for machine readable results. And good news, it looks like test case number one is now passing. I'll open Testing Center in my org to see what my low code colleagues would. Now, this is a really nice way to share information across my entire team. In fact, there are more ways to collaborate on agent tests. There's another set of tests here that were generated by Testing Center's AI. Now, because agent tests are first class platform metadata, all I have to do is use the org browser to retrieve those AI generated test cases. Looking at the metadata XML, you can see why we built support for YAML test specs. Natural language config and XML are not a good combo. The good news is I can generate a YAML test spec from an AI evaluation definition metadata file. That'll give me a much better editing experience if I want to add, remove, or modify test cases later. This last demo shows how talking with an agent from ProCode Tools unlocks new and productive troubleshooting patterns when working with agents. Our local info agent still has a failing test, and this one is not a false negative. So looking at the actual outcome, my guess is that there's something wrong with the invocable apex that powers the check weather action. To troubleshoot, I'm going to start a conversation preview with a local info agent. I say yes to saving transcripts and wait for the session to begin. I ask about the weather to go down the same path that my agent test did. Sure enough, I'm seeing the same issue. I think the problem might be the callout in my weather service class. I open that class up and right away I spot the issue. My callout is using the weather endpoint named credential, which should have an underscore separating weather and endpoint. I make the fix, deploy the class, and return to my conversation with the local info agent. I ask the agent to check the weather again, and this time I get a working response. This kind of fast feedback loop is possible because I've got all the tools I need right here in one place. And after ending my session with the agent, I have access to the transcript of our conversation and the agent's raw JSON responses, which in some cases could help with further troubleshooting. If you'd like to learn more about the AgentForce DX Pro Code tools I just demoed, here are the best places to go. AgentForce DX documentation is part of the AgentForce Developer's Guide, and all agent-related commands are in the CLI command reference. Now, I showed you a lot these past eight minutes, but there's more to come in the coming months. Between now and Dreamforce, we hope to bring a number of enhancements for building, testing, and debugging agents. And yes, I said debugging instead of just preview. That reflects our goal to deliver tools and capabilities that are unique to AgentForce DX Pro Code. And if you'd like to impact our roadmap, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us using this short link to share your questions, thoughts, and feedback. Thank you so much for investing the time to watch this video, and thank you for being a Salesforce developer.